people development and mentoring. So this isn't just about uh, training. Uh, it's not um, just about mentoring either. It's about linking everything together. Um, so Cora gave a um, very nice introduction. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm not even gonna bother talking through this. Um, so firstly, no, nothing stays the same. No day is the same. Um, I think the only constant that we have is change. Um, and that's something that we can all probably recognize right now. Uh, and we can certainly recognize it from um, our experiences uh, in the last six months or so. Um, but I think the being brave part is really important. Being more brave, um, you know, we obviously need to be fit for, for purpose um, for 21st century, but also I think we need to be better and braver at leading and helping lead our organizations into the future. And, you know, if you think about um, behavior change right now, if you think about all the sort of emotions that are, are flying around, um, that is an acceleration essentially of what maybe um, some modernists or some innovators in our industry had hoped for um, maybe over a five, 10 year period. But this has escalated our situation rather quickly, um, which I think can be of benefit and ever the optimist I am, um, look at things like that as an opportunity to, to progress. Um, and I think the being more brave part comes back to as well, not just about being brave to step forward and not just being brave to develop, but being more brave to have a voice. Um, it's something that I promised myself I would be more brave this year by speaking at events, doing more webinars and being more in front of other people and sharing the opinions and experiences that I have. Um, because I do believe that sharing will essentially help other people. Um, and I think that you know, we've all, especially from these types of um, you know, Zoom calls, we've all learned from you know, experts and other people. And I think that's really, really important, um, particularly from the shared experience point of view. But that kind of leads me on to something that I really believe in, never stop learning. And no one is too senior. Um, so I'm just reflecting back to uh, when I took on the chair's position um, in Scotland for the PRCA, we conducted a member survey and I was a bit shocked to see that somebody had responded saying, been there, done that and got the t-shirt when it came to CPD. And on, on sort of further exploration, we have realised that people's perceptions of CPD is completely different. People, some people don't know what it is. Some people think it's a very formal approach. Um, and so I think the learning aspect um, and, and saying never stop learning is probably easier than to say CPD to somebody right now. And um, particularly is how many webinars have we been on um, since some of us have had time to, to spare in the last few months. Um, we've been learning so much and it's putting that learning into action that's really, really important. Um, and I, I think when people have the sort of attitude of, um, you know, I've been there, done that and got a t-shirt, like I don't really need to learn anymore, I'm at my peak. I think that doesn't necessarily represent the best leadership that we need to be presenting in terms of a role model and in terms of, you know, bringing on the future, um, the future generations of our industry and painting a true picture as well. Um, so continued professional development for all, um, you know, here are some ways that you can continue to professionally develop. Um, you know, we've talked about webinars, industry events, blogs, I mean, how many blogs do we read or do we write? Um, podcasts are so big now, they are so freely available, they are so flexible when you listen to them. Research, volunteering, um, training and mentoring as well. There are so many different ways that you can continue to professionally develop um, and there are ways to capture that as well. So, for example, the PRC CPD platform. But it's all about people and it's all about our people in our industry. And, you know, whether you are at the top of your game in a leadership team or if you're just starting out 
um, as an intern or a graduate. Um, it's all about our people and it's about that sort of two-way approach as well. Everyone has their own needs and wants. Um, I really, you know, everybody is individual. Um, I quite often say, um, you know, I'm me and that's my superpower because I do believe that individual people have like strengths and their weaknesses and they have also potentially identified a particular direction they want to go in in their career. Um, so they will have their own individual needs and wants. But does your culture and your agency and your business, your organization empower your people? Does it tell them to go away and be the best they can be? Or does it stifle them with the culture around them that isn't particularly innovative, isn't particularly um, positive in its approach? Um, and are you diverse and inclusive in thinking, skills and people? And that is a really, really big point because, you know, we've, we've, you know, when we talk about purpose and we look at culture and we look at values and we look at diversity and we've talked a lot about diversity recently, but if you don't have those positive things in place and you're not proactively being diverse and you're not proactively having a really positive culture that is inclusive, then are you really developing your people properly? Are you, are you creating an environment for them that they want to be in? So you identify the needs um, of your people, undertake the activity to whether it's a learning opportunity, it might be skills, it might be knowledge, and obviously you evaluate. But as businesses become more complex and agile, they will absolutely vary with and so will the activities. So as we are rethinking, reimagining and reigniting out of lockdown, restarting businesses, remodeling and restructuring organizations, these needs will change. Um, so you might have less staff, you might be more virtual, you might have um, completely redone a process. Um, these things will change um, and they will also change the skills and the skills gaps within your organization. So it's really important to, you know, from a leadership perspective, to be very mindful of that and also to encourage your teams to be talking to you about that as well. One type of development that won't change. Um, so mentoring. Um, I believe everyone needs a mentor. I've talked about it for years. I've been involved in a lot of mentoring programs. Um, I have, um, you know, I think mentoring certainly should work both ways. Um, I think, you know, I've included their reverse mentoring. Um, you're not only learning, um, you know, about that person, you're also learning from them if you're a mentor. Um, and it's really important because you could actually be learning stuff about your business, your organization or your industry at the same time as helping that individual. And obviously that mentee will be learning from you um, and will be kind of taking your guidance, but it, it is a two way street. And I think that mentoring sometimes um, seems like uh, owning up to a weakness or something like that. Whereas actually it's definitely more about taking control and saying, I need a mentor because I need to be heading in X, Y, Z or direction. Um, and I think it's a really important point for everyone to consider at every stage in their career. Um, there are people that are CEOs that probably have handfuls of mentors uh, because they have specific needs for specific mentors who have specific skill sets. And that's really important because it goes to that sort of rounder, um, rounder person who has, a, um, you know, kind of experience in all different areas um, and can advise and lead properly and it does come back to leadership. So it's like public relations, you build relationships, we earn mutual understanding and respect, we earn trust, but then we also can retain talent and then we can develop the leaders of the future and that is where mentoring and developing people really is missing an opportunity at the moment because I think too many people think of it as a training program or we'll just do this to fill a gap. But this is about really considering organizations and people and individuals and how they'll work together for the future. Yeah. Yeah. Mentioned require soft skills as well. So active listening, empathy, self-reflection, learning how to accept and give feedback. It's not all about the you will go and do this and you must learn about that 
Um, and as I said before, you know, you can learn more about your business agency and solve more problems if you're actually listening to what's actually being said. So whether it's learning um, or mentoring, everyone should be developing. We can't stand still and wait to be spoon fed. Um, there's a culture and there has been for some time now of, well, I wasn't told to do that or I didn't know that was an opportunity. And I think that we as practitioners and innovators um, and some of us as entrepreneurs have that opportunity to go and create um, you know, mentoring uh, opportunities for other people have the opportunity to create uh, learning and, and um, um, learning opportunities, whether it's working with the PRCA or whether it's within your own organization. But we have an opportunity to show the way forward. And I think that is the, the, the main sort of point in, in mentoring is that leadership. Um, and as public relations practitioners and as strategic advisors, as you know, part of the management and leadership teams, if we're leading, um, you know, expected to help lead organizations, then we need to know every aspect about it, a 360 degree view. We need to know the people and we need to have the right people in the right place to help us do that. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for that, Laura. That was, um, that was really interesting. And just one of the things that stuck out at the end there is you, talking about this as a PR issue and linking it to the definition or the understanding of what we consider PR to be. Because I suppose traditionally the things that we're talking about would be seen as sitting in HR, for example. Uh, they are kind of outside of the remit of what a PR professional should, uh, should be focusing on. But um, the point about leadership and PRs transitioning to a, a, a senior leadership role fits in really nicely with it so I think I think you're absolutely right it's some it's an issue that we are uh, we have to be very very aware of particularly um, if we're advising businesses on um, how to create internal cultures that are inclusive that are successful so um, yeah there was there's was plenty in there um, that I found that I found really interesting I've got a couple of questions um, that I have for myself but I'm just wondering if anyone else had anything in particular that they'd like to raise with Laura initially. Steve, I'll let you go ahead. Thanks, Laura. Um, I, it's the obvious question, isn't it? In this um, mm -hmm. concept of Zoom and everything virtual, and particularly with interns coming in, who traditionally sit in a, an office and learn from the vibe of the office. Do you know, do you, do you think that um, not, having stuff virtual actually has made things difficult or do you think it's an opportunity um, because actually it's a good way of reaching out to a number of people all around the UK internationally so I'm, I'm in two minds whether a problem or an opportunity for us. Um, so my belief is that where there's a challenge there's always an opportunity um, we are in or as they say we are where we are <laughs> uh, I think that where where we have an opportunity now is that you know I talked about this acceleration it's made us you know go virtual it's made us have online meetings but it's also made us understand that we can recruit um, we can work with people that you know that don't live in the same city as us that um, you know, so from an intern's point of view, they don't have to be geographically located in the same place. Um, whether you're placed in the, um, you know, in the same geographic location or not, particularly in Scotland with our restrictions at the moment, it doesn't actually matter because you're not going into an office. Um, so I think what this does do is question, and this comes back to what I've been working on since probably lockdown started at the end of March, when I lost a huge part of my business and I thought, well, how am I going to get out of this? What am I going to do? I have to think like other businesses will, and this is what I'm going to put together to help them. So rethinking, re-engaging, and then reigniting. So the rethinking part is actually breaking down absolutely everything in a business or an organization. So breaking down your stakeholders, breaking down and auditing all your platforms, you know, doing research, um, all of that, like go right back to basics, like how I would work with a new client essentially, and then see what all the problems are, do your SWOT analysis, do your PESL, 
and um, make sure that you've identified all these different areas and then come up with solutions to tackle each of them. Um, and, and when you start to think like that, you don't really start to think of the challenges or, oh, woe is me. You then start to get excited about opportunities and what you can change. And then within that will come, undoubtedly, will come culture change, um, will come um, process change um, and, and operational change, everything. Um, and then that's when you can start to think about, well, you know, if I'm taking on this intern, how do we then onboard them? Well, you know, maybe, um, you know, mentoring is a really great example. Maybe you come up with a buddy system for new people where, you know, for the first hour of every day, I'm buddying with the, the new intern and we sit and we've got Zoom open and we're talking to each other about what we're doing. It's kind of like mentoring, reverse mentoring, but I'm helping that person through settling in we do a check-in later on in the day there's there's so many ways of doing it and the best thing to do I would say is to ask the person like how do you feel um how was today how could we improve how would you feel more included and then go with it because we're all in a situation right now where there's a lot of new stuff happening new ways of working um and I think it's important that we again coming back to those sharing those learnings that I was talking about if we share learnings of the good, the bad and the ugly, then other people can learn from it. And that's where I think our industry has really developed in the last few years. We're not so closed book and don't copy my homework. We're actually more open now. And I think that's a really um, sort of big advantage of working in our industry, but equally when you've got people that are open to sharing, that's when you can really start to see a better community developing as well. I think, I think that's a really good uh, point. And, and, useful practical advice there as well on how to help with um young people who are entering the company entering the industry for the first time and being open and honest with them about how they learn because everyone learns in their own way and as you said we're all we're all learning through this experience i was speaking to uh, melissa at the taylor bennett foundation a few weeks ago and asking her you know what's it like for for your placements and the interns for starting out at organizations and she said firstly there's a big reduction in the number of businesses who are physically able to to support them and to to, uh, to manage the placements but then those that are are obviously going through a whole learning process of how to do all that remotely because yeah in, in many ways there's nothing that can replicate the experience of someone coming into the office for a first time seeing and seeing everyone around them and learning from that so it's about how we how we adjust to that but having said that I think um to, to Steve's original point, I think there's, there's, there's been some amazing CPD opportunities, uh, particularly over the last six months. Like, um, just, you know, there's been the task force that we put together, there's been tons of panel discussions, training sessions, things that would have cost hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Look at the uh, Alistair Campbell event last Friday, for example. That's, that was another one. There's been some really great opportunities, not just from the PRCA, but from um, businesses across all industries. Uh, to 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 learn and to engage with speakers who are who are full of insight. So it's worked both ways. I think it's been um it's been a, a really interesting period. Uh, Laura, would you say that this this crisis has kind of really um, accentuated the need for businesses to to get to grips with people skills and mentoring, particularly given the impacts of jobs that we're seeing um, at the moment. I think we, I think we're at the start of people starting to recognise it, and this is maybe one of the, the start of the conversation that we can have, um, to help other people realise that it's important before it's too late, um, particularly as you know furlough is ending October, yeah. there will be redundancies, um, there will be agencies and organisations restructuring um, entirely. Um, or just by teams. Um, and I think that we, as again, kind of coming back to that sort of sharings and learnings, I think as, as an industry, if we can continue to collaboratively have those discussions with each other and share, then we will be helping each other. I'm very aware that there are pockets of agency heads that are, you know, friends with each other that will speak on a regular basis or, um, heads of organisations who might do that, but that doesn't always filter down to, um, you know, the, the small agency with six people who's really struggling. Um, and so 
but having said that, there are agencies um, and, and one that I've just started to work with who, um, who is in a, a real period of acceleration, um, like massive growth, um, but that growth needs to be managed properly as well because, you know, blogged uh, recently about boom and bust you don't want to go boom and then all of a sudden go bust you want to manage the process manage the people onboard people like clients staff etc um there's a bedding in period as well and yeah i think i think that as long as we continue to speak and we we can all work together to to talk to share to um i think there's definitely you know coming back to the confidence tracker confidence is building which is good but at the same time, you know, there could be different decisions made by government tomorrow that will impact that. And we don't know the full extent to the end of the furlough scheme and from Brexit as well. So we have to start thinking about sort of bite-sized chunks of how we're running our organisations and businesses and agencies that we're able to be agile again. So kind of coming back to that leadership about things will change, the so skills will change, the so people will change. We've talked about AI for you know quite a while now, uh, definitely a, a skill that we need to be um, thinking about constantly, uh, but at the same time, there are other skills that were, you know, in terms of leadership and basic things like active listening and empathy that are, that are never gonna go away from what we have to practice. Yeah. Um, I th- what, what tips would you share for any uh, leaders in, you'd be advising about mentoring practical tips on on where to go if they have staff who they think would benefit mm-hmm. from mentoring or even if they would be interested in um, um, mentoring themselves practically where where would you recommend they go so well two things i've been involved with recently um one the, the cipr fellows um progress scheme i put together and we launched with just the fellows uh, to start with Um, And it basically was a really simple guideline about um, starting a conversation about how you would set out your goals, how frequently you'd meet with each other, um, how you would communicate with each other in in the interim, um, how long it might last, um, you know, specific things that you think that, you know, you would choose a mentor for. So don't come to me if you want to know about um, land security. (laughs) come and talk to me about crisis communication or about you know issues and risk assessments or um, you know mentoring or whatever um, but I, I think that's one thing you kind of identify in somebody that you know they've got the skills to help you or the knowledge or the experience but equally don't choose someone like yourself yeah because um, you know you're not going to learn you're not going to have that diversification of thinking um, of skills, of experiences, of culture and, and, and everything. Um, so try and look for somebody who's different, who can offer a complementary um, sort of viewpoint as well. Um, and from, I would say, don't hesitate, just go and do it. Um, you know, I've been ballsy in the past in my youth of going up and just saying, will you mentor me? Um, you, you know, if, if, there's a, if there's a scheme, um, great, join it. Um, I launched my own last week because I recognised that it, it's definitely a thing that people need, particularly agency heads who are struggling because they don't have a big leadership team. They might only have a team of 10. Um, they need people to help them with, um, with certain aspects of their business. So Yeah, and a lot, of, a lot of people in those positions have never experienced anything like what we're going through at the moment. Um, and that was one of the things that came, that was fed back to us through the task force is the importance of just um, being close to someone with experience who has the knowledge and understanding of how to navigate their way through a crisis and who doesn't um, start cutting business left right and center Um, so yeah I I absolutely agree if you think about the like the skill type thing I was talking about earlier if you know that you need a right now you need a safe pair of hands for the next six months go and find that you know safe pair of hands but after that you may need someone that's completely off the wall or innovative or um, just thinks differently outside the box, then go and seek them. Yeah. There will be different times um, in your career where you need different people for different things. And that's okay as well. People expect that. And I think that it shows maturity. It shows um, that you, you yourself want to become a leader who has all those 
different touch points and who's aware of all that as well. I think that's really, really important. Yeah, I think that's a crucial point. And we've had a question that's come in from Rex. He says, what does Laura think should be done about large agencies who still refuse to pay interns? And should we be calling out this behaviour? 100%. 100%. You know, there, there, was, there was, I mean, we're going back years now. We've, we, interns do need experience, um, but equally these organisations or um, agencies, they obviously need the pairs of hands. So they're essentially doing work. They're not just there to make tea anymore. They're putting together lists, they're doing research and stuff. Um, they are essentially doing work. Why wouldn't you pay them is what I would be asking. Um, why wouldn't you pay somebody? That's like saying, you know, it's a, it's a position that we, we're not going to pay the cleaner or we're not going to pay the guy that opens the door and receives all of our mail and, and signs for stuff, concierge. You know, it, 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 we, we should be past all this now. We shouldn't be revisiting um, what should be a basic uh, best practice in the industry. Um, and it shouldn't just be about being held to account by being a member of an industry organisation either. It should be best practice and absolutely call it out. I would go further than that. It's against the law. Um, and also, if, you, if anyone knows any of our members who are doing it, we will just throw them out of membership um, straight away. It's, as Laura said, we've gone past this, this. This is old news, really. This is ridiculous for even talking about it. But yeah, let me know. I, I think, um, yeah, I agree with, with everything um, Steve and, and Laura has said. The, the, the thing that sticks out for me in the internship debate, and, and Laura, you're right, it's been rumbling, rambling on for, for way too long and progress has, has not been anywhere near as quick as it should have been. But I think a lot of the time, senior industry people um, will see that relationship between a business and the intern on an individual one-to-one -one basis. So they'll say, I'm gonna give this person a great opportunity. In return, they're gonna get this great experience. It's a win-win. But what they don't know or what they're starting to learn is that they're complicit in a, in a culture that fosters inequality and economic, and, and really kind of fosters economic prejudice because you can only work for free uh, when you can afford to do so. And, and, and there's only a limited number of people who can who have afforded that luxury in life. Um, I undertook a, a, probably about four or five unpaid internships um, at the start of my career. Um, and I was only able to do that because I lived at home in London um, and I could get in and out of town quite, quite easily. Um, and I, 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 was for, I was in that fortunate position, but lots of people wouldn't have had that opportunity. And it's not right that some look, afforded more of an advantage than others at that stage of their career. If you look at the people that um, potentially have had the, um, the, the sort of opportunity given to them, I bet that it won't be from a diverse, um, you know, social <coughs> background, um, relating to your point there. But equally, you know, I think we need to stop thinking about things like internships again let's look at our industry and see you know what we've got um we've got the um, apprenticeship scheme um you know there are mentoring scheme the, if it's a paid role then pay that person and take them on as a member of staff whether it's part-time flexi time um you know temporary contract um these you know there there are this this is where you know we talk about generational shifts in the industry and when things might change. I see change within challenger agencies being born who have values and purpose at their heart. I see problems with traditional agencies who are fixated on media coverage and AVEs and all the bad stuff that we don't like, not paying interns. And that's potentially because there isn't a modern thinker who's pushing in the leadership team um, and it, it is a, it might be one generation or maybe two generations before that type of thing's gone. But I think, again, if we can work together, if we can call things out, if we can show, you know, hail best practice, but equally, yeah. you know, stamp out bad practice. Yeah, I agree with you uh, 100%. Um, did anyone have any final thoughts for Laura before we wrap up? 
No, okay. Um, Laura, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you taking time out uh, to share. You. Just actually before we wrap up, another question from Rex, which has just come in. He says, does Laura offer mentoring? I do. <laughs> I launched I launched my um, my my personal one last week actually because um, I I suppose my experience of being a mentee and being a mentor is now kind of all come together um, so that I've got a, it's actually uh, I've called it mentoring and development coaching because there's there's quite a lot of coaching involved in it as well um, it's not just strictly views and experience sharing so um, there's a bit more to it than that but yes I do. Cool. Maybe a conversation offline, perhaps, for that one. <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks again, Laura. Really appreciate you taking the time to share uh, to share your thoughts on people development and mentoring. And um, yeah, very grateful for, for the opportunity. To Thank everyone else, we'll be um, back at the normal time of midday next Thursday. So do keep an eye out on your emails for details of that. Um, but yeah, all that's left for me to do is thank Laura again and um, see you all again soon.